For today's video, these students should be able to perform this activity and they will be able to describe the appearance of a fault and explain how fault forms. So they need two sheets of cardboard, fine sand, ruler, and newspaper. So they have to spread the newspaper on the table, arrange the two sheets of cardboard edge to edge, pour sand along the boundary of two sheets with ruler, they have to flatten the top of the sun and make two parallel lines and now they will move the sheet slowly in the direction. For the next activity, this is entitled Stick and Slip. These students should be able to explain how faults generate earthquakes and explain why not all movement along faults produces earthquakes. Materials they need to small boxes, masking tape, rubber band, and paper clip. So they will attach the rubber band to the paper clip, then attach the paper clip to one end of one box. Place the boxes side by side and they have to put toy house on the box with the rubber band and tape it lightly, the two boxes together. So this is important, do not stick the tape on the boxes too much because this tape is meant to come off. With their left hand, they have to hold the box without the rubber band in place and with the other hand, slowly pull the rubber band in the direction. Imagine the boxes as the ground and the boundary between them as a fault. Energy from inside the earth makes the ground move. You simulate this by pulling on the rubber band. There is no movement right away because of friction. But once the friction is overcome, the ground suddenly moves and an earthquake occurs. Some scientists describe this process as stick and slip. At first, the rocks are stuck together due to friction. Later, the rocks suddenly slip, generating an earthquake. So every time a fault slips, the earth quakes. Straighten out and vibrate. The vibrations travel in all directions and people in different places will feel them as a quake. 